John Brisker, a superstar ABA and former NBA player. He was a great player who had a long career ahead of him. He proved himself to be NBA worthy in the NBA, but it all went downhill after a feud with Bill Russell, and then he just mysteriously disappeared. What is going on everybody? It is Handles, and before we start the video, I will always give two shoutouts to my Instagram followers. So shout out to Fahim Mirza 6 and Arnav Kumar 4. You guys really show me a lot of support and I just want to thank you guys. And remember if you guys want a shout out, all you gotta do is follow me on IG. But a special shout out to Thon Maker, not the actual one, but this person's channel. He's the one who suggested me this video. But anyways, today's video is on John Brisker, a former superstar basketball player who was on the rise to a great and long career in the NBA. But then something happened, something that ended everything. But before we get into all the details, we must first start the story at the beginning. John Brisker was a tough kid growing up in the streets of Detroit in the 50s and 60s. He once told a reporter, In Detroit, if you're tough enough, they'll name playgrounds after you. And sure enough, the playground located between Hamtramp High School and Highland Park was named after him, since that was the park where he played basketball as a kid. He didn't only play basketball though, he also had experience in boxing. So yeah, he wasn't a person you would try to fight. But fast forward a few years and John enrolled at the University of Toledo. He was a star there, but his grades were not looking too good. And he was very frustrated about the racial conflict there, where he grew up in Detroit. There was no problems between races and skin color, but at Toledo, it was everywhere and he wasn't used to it. With his frustration, he struggled in classes and ended up dropping out in his senior year. But he found a new start for his life when he was drafted by the Pittsburgh Condors of the ABA in 1969. As a rookie, he was dominating them. He was scoring 21 points per game, and in his second season, he was scoring 29 every night. He was a 6'5", 210 pound man with the skill set of a guard and a power forward. He could shoot and drive, but also bully everyone down low with how rough he was. By the end of his third season in the ABA, he was averaging 28.9 points, 9.1 rebounds, and 4.1 assists per game. Yeah, he was dominating everybody. He was a two-time All-Star and was a superstar for the ABA. But a lot of players felt as if he was a little too violent. One of those players was Art Becker. Sadly, there isn't any footage of this, but one time, John threw an elbow at Becker, to which he earned an ejection off of, but John wasn't done there. He later ran onto the court and charged after Becker three times before the police had to grab him and escort him to the locker room. Down, and he'll fight a referee, you know, he'll fight a coach, and he'll definitely fight another player. But still, even after many crazy and wild things he did, he was offered and signed a great deal with the NBA's Seattle Supersonics. But not that many people were accepting of him in the NBA as he was in the ABA. Most of his teammates were hesitant around him, since people had said that he always carried a gun in his bag and if you were to get in an argument with him, everyone would be scared of that he would reach into his bag, pull out a gun and shoot you. But of course that was just speculation, none of that ever actually happened. But he did not gel well with his coach, Bill Russell. Bill Russell was a big believer in hard discipline and John was not a believer in that. But no matter what, he was still a valuable player coming off the bench for the Supersonics. He was averaging over 11 points and 4 rebounds in the 3 seasons he played with the Sonics. He was also very involved in the community in his time with the NBA. He regularly attended charity events and held many basketball clinics for underprivileged kids. But despite playing well for the Sonics, he was released by them in 1975. The only statement the Sonics had said about the matter was that he was causing conflict in the locker room, and that wasn't really hard to believe. But after that, he never received any real interest from any other team, most likely because of his attitude problems, so he gave up professional basketball. So in 1978, he decided to travel to Uganda, leaving his wife and daughter behind, but mysteriously was never heard from again. Now there's many theories on what exactly happened to Brisker. Some say he died in the Jonestown massacre in Guyana, but there was no evidence pointing to that he was even in Guyana. The most likely theory seems to be that he befriended the Ugandan dictator Idi Amin, who was a basketball fan and invited Brisker to Uganda. 
They say he became a mercenary soldier for Amin, but Adi Amin was overthrown in 1979. So this theory means that John was killed by a firing squad who overthrown Amin. John Brisker's official status was that he was missing, until in 1985 he was declared dead. There are some people who still believe John is alive because of the fact they never found his body and the fact there is no evidence connecting him to Amin. They say he just does not want to be found and just wanted to start his life over. But the mystery of John Brisker is still an ongoing thing and only just adds to the legend of him. And that's the story of John Brisker. He was a superstar player for the ABA and a great player in the NBA who was rejected by them for his attitude then went mysteriously missing. But anyways guys, that's the story for today. And as always, till next time, I'm Handles.